Pierce back out to Risen for three. No Big good. <laughs> Just a little bit short on that last one. Hawks have the lead right now at the end of the half by just two points. It's a close so, game, Mason. Yeah, I mean, Frontier kind of pulled away in that uh, first quarter. Uh, they had a bit of a stronger lead, but Hampshire was able to stay with the Hawks for the entire second quarter, uh, really making them work for that lead uh, tie game for most of it, honestly. Definitely, um, yeah. And a great job by Max Millet, uh, again, that layup in the last few seconds to help them uh, pull ahead and go into the locker room leading the game right now. Because, you know, that's a big uh, mentality thing. you got to make sure that you're yeah. feeling good going into the locker room. So uh, we're going to the halftime right now with the lead scorer overall still the Dragon. Even though he hasn't scored that much yet, he still is leading with 10 points on the night. Owen Babb right behind him with nine. And on the other side of the court, it's Jack Rezin with nine as well, leading the Hampshire Raiders. Now... Brayden, you've been talking about uh, some kind of fast-paced defense. Do you think that that's still the move that uh, Frontier should be looking for to continue uh, to lead this game? Honestly, I mean, it would help, but I don't think that's what they need. I think what they just need is to stay on their man and just really guard them as much as they can because they're definitely working them around, a lot of quick passes being seen, and they're leaving a lot of people open down to the paint. So I think what Frontier really needs to focus on is just find a person and stay on them, guard them as to the best of your ability, honestly. So are, do you think that they should uh, run a man, like man-on-man -man defense instead of uh, running a zone? I think they should. I mean, if, if it's obvious somebody's going to take a layup or something like that, definitely crash the center. But sure. as of right now, they're leaving too many people open in the center and the paint, and they're just getting a lot of easy points from that. Absolutely. A quick, a quick pass from the top of the key, and it's just two easy points for Hampshire. So yeah, Frontier definitely has to keep a lookout for that. Yeah, speaking of that, a great example of that was when Aiden Hawking, he did just no one – like in that little um, pocket in the paint, just right under the net. No mm. one was there. He saw the opening, went right there, got the pass, easy two points. His only points of the game right now, but it was some uh, well-earned points. I mean, it was just great awareness from uh, him on his part. And uh, Hampshire's doing a great job of uh, reading the plays that Frontier is putting together and uh, how they're trying to stay in this game. Staying with them so far, but we'll see how that plays out when we come back in the second half of this game. It's 27 to 25. Before we go, we'd like to remind you that tonight's FCAT Sports Broadcast is supported by Albert Hearing Services. Albert Hearing Services in Greenfield offers hearing evaluations, hearing aid sales, earwax removal, and more. They are committed to improving lives one ear at a time. Call 413-774-0100 or visit alberthearing.com and Holiday Pizza, the official pizza of FCAT Sports. 27-25, Hawks on top by two at the half. We will be right back. You're watching Frontier Community Access Television. Hello and welcome back to Frontier Community Access Television. I'm Mason Smith, still here with Brayden Repold, Ben Roberts, Kevin Murphy, Tom Albert, Tyler Wolkowitz, Isaac Warmgore, Max Warmgore, all the rest of the FCAT crew. Thank you all so much for sticking with us, tuning back in. We got a great game happening here tonight, folks, in Good Now Gymnasium. It's 27-25. Your home team, the Frontier Redhawks, is up by two, but they have a very worthy competitor on the other side of the court right now. It's the Hampshire Raiders, um, who have been putting up some outstanding numbers so far tonight. And, Brayden, how do you think that Hampshire has been able to stick with the Redhawks so far in the game? I mean, one thing I want to say is that I think at the beginning, Frontier's defense was pretty solid, but then at the end, it just started falling down. And the, they didn't really guard much in the paint, and uh, Hampshire is able to capitalize off of that. They get a man down in the paint, they'd pass it from the top of the key, get an easy layup. So, and they just kept repeating that process. So hopefully Frontier can capitalize on that and stand a man and be able to defend them better. Yeah, totally. We'll see what kind of defense they are going to be playing when they come off of halftime. And they are taking the court right now. Max Millette is out there. He got a couple of late points in the half. Um, he right now has 146 on the season, just needs four more to cash in 150. So... We'll see if he can get some points early. And there's the buzzer. So, 10-point game now. Yeah, they were able to stretch the point differential by two points. Yeah, it's I mean, starting to come back a little bit. They had a good look at some points, but Frontier has just been putting together. I mean, they had a couple droughts on the offense as well. But I got to tell you, some a trend that we've been seeing at um, – 
a lot of the basketball games. Third quarter has been really tough for Frontier. Just, you know, it's that third leg out of four, and it it kind of, the it's just the mindset, I think. Absolutely. You know, and we, we've talked about the pacing, and this is where it really catches up to them. Not this game. And as good as that is, it also makes me worried about is it going to catch up to them in the fourth quarter? You know, is that really where it's they're going to, you know, shoot themselves in the foot where, you know, maybe it is more affordable to um, take a bit of a beating in the third quarter? Yeah, Mason, I mean, I feel like the third quarter is just really important in basketball because a lot of times it's a deciding factor whether a team who is down comes back or whether a team who is up just falls behind. I mean, it's just so important, and a lot can happen during then. The, a lot of times what happens is the power shifts between teams, so... Yeah. We saw that a little bit for Frontier, but hopefully we'll see a little bit of better playing from the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, this time, like, the momentum swung in the direction of Frontier this time around, and, you know, that's great for them. They got to keep it going in the next eight minutes of play. Owen Babb over there trying to hype his team up, and they got a 10-point lead right now, and all they got to do is hold on to that, extend it as much as they can, and shut down the Raiders for the next eight minutes. Off. He'll pass it over to Millette. Takes the jumper. That's good. Timeout, time Hampshire. Out. And who's surprised about that one? A 21-point lead for the Hawks. Wow. And who would have guessed, Braden? I mean, fourth quarter start off, start off a little slow, but now it's ramped up completely, and things are have gone crazy in the past few possessions. That's safe to say. Absolutely. And, you know, the sixth man has been doing a great job. Cheerleaders hyping them up, too. They've been making a lot of noise. And, I mean, Let's just go back to that play by Garrett Dredge. Oh, yeah. It wasn't, he didn't score any points, but he was doing a great job of just, I like, that's the kind of thing, you know, you're not in an opportunity to get points, but you're an opportunity to make a play for your team and you consistently give it your all. That's why Garrett Dredge is such an incredible player for me and such a crucial player for the Hawks. Definitely. You know, all of these guys, they have their strengths, they have their weaknesses. Garrett Dredge, it, it's hard to find his weakness, I gotta say because he just lays it all out on the court every game, every chance he gets. I'm also sure, Mason, you're happy to hear the crowd cheering up on right up back there. Yeah, and that was the cheerleaders over to our right, getting them hyped up, leading a couple cheers. And they were on our feet, they were on their feet just a few moments ago, slowing it down. Timeout's gonna be called by the Red Hawks. So with 3.07 to go, Frontier up by 21, and I mean, I didn't really expect them to pull away this much, Braden. Me either. I mean, I was hoping for them to make a comeback, but I didn't expect this much out of it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not complaining, that's for sure. Totally. I mean, Owen Babb, look, he's, it looks like he's going to have probably upwards of 20 points on the night. He has 19 right now. Max Millet just trailing him with 17 uh, and on the other side of the court, their lead scorer is Jack Rezin. He's had an outstanding game, 13 points on the night. Um, the only person who's really in foul trouble right now is um, Aiden Hawking, who has three. And, I mean, this whole – the thing I will say for both teams, they've been doing a great job uh, staying out of foul trouble. I think there's only one time where we saw a bonus happen, mm. and maybe, maybe I'm just imagining things, but <laughs> – um, both teams have done a really great job uh, playing clean tonight and uh, generally some really great calling uh, from the refs, calling it, you know, calling it both ways, which we've talked yeah. about that, you know, that's a great thing and making sure no one gets hurt. You know, that's also that's that's an even bigger thing for me. And we've yeah. talked about that a lot. And as they come back from the timeout, really quick, going to thank our sponsors one more time. Albert Hearing Services, improving lives one year at a time. They're in Greenfield. And right here in South Deerfield, just down the road, is Holiday Pizza, the official pizza of FCAT Sports. Timeout going to be called by Hampshire. Evidently, they still think it's a game. Coach Morris would disagree, though, I think. So, 1.37 to go. Let's see, what's, what's the lead we're looking at? We're looking at 21 points for Frontier right now. Man. So, yeah, it wouldn't you're, be the easiest comeback of a... I mean, all you got to do is seven threes in a row in, in oh, 97 yeah. seconds. That's nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing too hard. Yeah. And I don't, you know, just watching them do it, like, performing right in front of us right now, 
I don't think we talk about the cheerleaders enough, Braden. They're, no. They, we haven't had them in the past couple years, and they're bringing a whole new level to uh, this uh, basketball game. They don't uh, – I don't think that they show up for the girls' games. Maybe they'll show up for senior night, though. You never know. Um, and now Manning will dribble it out, and that is going to be the game, the second highest scoring game of the season for the Red Hawks. 71 points to Hampshire's 45. Looks like a close game for the three for three of the four quarters. And Frontier, they kind of pulled away in the third quarter and just really sealed the deal in the fourth. They really came back in the fourth quarter. I mean, man, oh, man, what a point difference there. And what a statement. Four wins in a row for the boys. And what a win for them. 71-45. And that's their seventh win. And I have six losses. So... They have that over 500 win percentage that they wanted so badly. First time of their season that they have that. And hopefully, I mean, that'll move them up in the power rankings too. So, you know. Definitely. I mean, I think they really needed this win. And I think they showed how much they wanted this win by playing at their hearts out, really. I mean, it really showed in the fourth quarter especially. I mean, Absolutely. they played amazing in the fourth quarter. And, I mean, it, some will say it's bad sportsmanship, but I think that it's just good mentality. Even if, even though you are, you're, you're winning by a good amount, just, you know, keeping that energy there uh, the whole game, even when you're, you know, you're one of the second string players and you're, um, you know, you don't get a lot of playing time. Just trying to have your moment on the court, make a play for your team, all that sort of thing. And so, you know, they did a great job with that uh, in this game tonight. So, um... The lead scorer, the big scorer, the two big scorers for the Red Hawks tonight are going to be Max Millette, who had a bit of a rough start but gets a lot of points in the second half. He had 17 points on the night, taking the lead just above him is 19 points. Owen Babb having an absolutely incredible night. Millette, um, he broke 150 on the night. Some notable players as well, 10 points. Nico Fasulo, Sasha Dragon with... 12, plenty of threes from him. Cade Manning hitting that three at the end too. And Garrett Dredge all around. Great game for him. He had six on the night. And Alex Ellis with four. On the other side of things, Jack Rezin going to be the lead scorer for the Raiders with 13. Five points for Kaloji. Braden Jarrett, Braylon Jarrett, excuse me, with nine. Two points for Liam Pond, even though I got to give him a little more credit than that. He was making a lot of things happen on the court. Uh, some great passing, good vision on the court for his team. Aiden Hawking with four points, and then Adam Galazinski with 11. And you can tell us a little bit about the rebounds and steals, Brain, which was a huge factor in this very defensive game, especially at the start. Absolutely. I mean, Frontier in the end was leading in rebounds. I mean, we had a few leaders for Frontier. We had Nico Fasula with five. Same thing with Max Millette also having five. And then the leader for the game, or for Frontier mainly, was Owen Babb with eight. And then matching that, Jake Rezin also had eight rebounds. And then they spread it out amongst the team a little more. Liam Pond had five rebounds. Ben Pierce had two. Aiden Hawking with three. And then Vince Carr also with three. Yeah, it was a really great game. Some really awesome rejections from some of the big guys out there for the Red Hawks. Uh, Sasha got a couple at the end. And a skyscraper, Owen Babb, just really making things yep. happen out there, both ends of the court. He might be, uh, I think, the key player in the game tonight for uh, the Red Hawks, sealing the deal. Huge win for them, 71-45. to 45. I've been Mason Smith here with Braden Reefold, Ben Roberts, Tyler Wolkowitz, Tom Aller, Kevin Murphy, Isaac Wormgore, Max Wormgore, all the rest of the FN crew. Thank you all so much for tuning in.